And then Jesus died, innocent and alone. It's Good Friday, and Good Friday might be the most uncomfortable of all of the days of Holy Week. It's the night where we leave Jesus in the grave. It's the night where, if we stay with the story of Jesus and wait for Easter to come on Sunday morning, Jesus is alone in the dark left by himself. It's tempting for us to skip right over Good Friday. It's tempting for us to pass right through it and to jump ahead to Easter morning. After all, Easter is the victory that we look forward to, the hope that we long for, the life that we yearn for, the presence of God with us forever that we're waiting on. But Good Friday is important. We can't just leave it behind. We need what Good Friday has to offer. Good Friday offers us the finishing touch of Jesus' work. Good Friday, in fact, is the basis of our relationship with Jesus, of our companionship with Him. On Good Friday, we learn several things. That Jesus feels like we do. He feels like us in our humanity. We find out that Jesus feels with us that we are not alone because of Good Friday. And we learn the importance of the phrase that Jesus cries out from the cross, It is finished! It is finished! What is finished? Well, we learn about it on Good Friday. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 to 18 are an important reading for today. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. For this reason, he had to be made like them, fully human in every way, in order that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in service to God, and that he might make atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. We need this message about Good Friday. This is the day that we learn that Jesus feels deeply and humanly like we do. This is the day that we realize that the scars on his hands and his side are the results of real wounds in a real life with real nerve endings leading to a real brain that resonates with real pain. It is on Good Friday that we understand that Jesus became fully like us to put his finishing touch on his work. We see Jesus touching a lot of people in his ministry. In fact, the touch of God is what we most need and long for in our hearts. Right now, we are longing in this pandemic of 2020 to touch each other, to shake hands to hug friends, to be gathered together for weddings. And we're experiencing the fear of death. Not only the fear that the pandemic itself might take away our life or our loved ones, but the real fear of being alone in death. And I hope that you're joining me in praying for those who feel alone right now, that God in His mercy would shorten the duration of this pandemic, that God in His love would help those who are alone in hospital rooms to feel the presence of God with them and our love with them so that they do not feel alone. Jesus in His ministry broke through these kinds of barriers with untouchable people, paralytics and lepers, people who were ritually unclean because they were outsiders or they had a a blood issue or a disease of some kind. Jesus welcomed people around his table and he 
rubbed shoulders with them, shared food with people that uh, were not considered touchable. And now on Good Friday, we see that Jesus in becoming fully human touches us. He shows us that he feels like we do. And because he suffered as he was tempted, he's able to help us because he became like us. But there's more. Jesus doesn't just feel the way that we feel. He doesn't just take death's biggest swing on the chin. Jesus also feels with us. Later in the Hebrews letter, therefore, since we have a great high priest who's ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. There are so many relationship-centered words in this reading. The greatest is that Jesus empathizes with you and with me. This means he feels with us. When we are feeling isolated and alone, Jesus doesn't just know what it's like. He's feeling it with us. Somehow, through Good Friday, Jesus reaches out across the centuries. He reaches out across vast distances. Something happens in the cosmos on Good Friday. It's more than just the veil that's torn and more than just the earth that shakes. Jesus shakes the very foundations of being so that in a way he is with you in this moment. He empathizes with our weakness. Listen to the relationship words in this passage. We have a great high priest. We don't lack, we have. We uh, have one who's been tempted in every way. He is ours. We have him in a very real sense. So we can approach God's throne of grace with confidence. We can come near, draw near to be touched by Jesus and by the Father because of Good Friday. If it wasn't for this suffering, if it wasn't for this loneliness, for this rejection, we would still have the hope of forgiveness of sins and the joy of Easter, but would it reach into our darkest night? Would it show up in our greatest despair? Because of Good Friday, Jesus covers the gap. He touches us. He puts his finishing touch on his work. All of the love, compassion, and outreach that he showed during his ministry is perfected on Good Friday. One more reading from Hebrews chapter 5. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. I want to ask you, how can the Son of God, without sin, be made perfect? We think about perfection in far too shallow terms as if perfection is just to do no wrong, Jesus did no wrong and did not reach perfection until Good Friday. How can this be? On Good Friday, Jesus shows his submission to God the Father. His obedience is perfected. He goes all the way. He doesn't stop short. He knows the cost and he has counted it, what it would take to make us sons and daughters of God. And this scripture says he learned obedience in his suffering. He was already perfectly obedient without sin, and yet he learns obedience on this day. The word for made perfect in the original language is a fascinating word. It means to come to the end of the line, to come to completion, to be fulfilled. To be made perfect does not necessarily mean that Jesus had flaws before this moment. We believe he was without sin, but it does mean he wasn't finished. It does mean the work was not yet done, like a grand masterpiece that an artist has been working on for years or for decades. To the uh, 
unattuned eye, it may seem that the work is done, yet to the master he sees a touch here and a touch there before he can finally sit back, quietly admit, confess, it is finished. In each of our lives we're moving towards something. We're moving towards a, a moment of fullness or completion. A moment when we come in front of the Lord face to face, when we have our own it is finished moment, we give up with our last breath our spirit to God and we entrust ourselves to the one who judges justly. And Good Friday is a great time to think about whether God is bringing his work inside of you and me to completion. How are we growing in looking like, in sounding like, and acting like our Lord? Jesus? Has anything changed in our life that shows that real growth and maturity and finishing are coming about? How do you see it? When have you seen this maturing and this growth happen? Does anyone say to you that they notice and they see in you this growth? When we obey Jesus with our initial love at the beginning of our faith, or as we follow him into the dark waters of baptism where we're submerged like he was into the dark, into the loneliness, into the silence of death. We experience with Jesus this finishing touch where we are made perfect not because we become sinless, but because we're filled with the presence of Christ, the hope in you of glory. In some way, in some great mystery, Jesus sees in us a masterpiece. And on the cross, he finishes, fulfills, comes to the end of writing his masterpiece. And we're welcomed into it on Good Friday. We're welcomed as we sit in the dark and in the quiet with Jesus to experience the call of God on our hearts to be like him because he was made like us. He sits with us and he finishes the work so that we never have to be alone. God bless you on Good Friday. And may he be with you and may you be aware of his loving presence and his finishing touches in your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.